In this video, we will try to figure out how to describe a document according to the words it contains. For example, if I have a Shakespeare play and I tell you that it has the word Juliet, you will immediately know what play I'm talking about. Um, likewise with this one, if you have a Shakespeare play and I tell you that it has the word Caesar, you will immediately know I'm talking about this one play. On the other hand, if I tell you that I have a Shakespeare play and it contains the word and, what is the play that I'm talking about? The information that I just gave you is completely useless. You will not be able to know what play it is just from that very common word and. This is what we'll be talking about. There's one technique to figure out which words are useful and which words are not, and it's called the TF-IDF matrix. So what we want to do is try to figure out what words are necessary for us to describe what a document is about. This is an extremely simple example where we have two documents. One says apples are delicious and the other one says cookies are delicious. What are these two documents? Uh, what are they about and how is the first one different from the second one? The difference between the two documents cannot be in the words now because both documents contain those words. It cannot be the words delicious or available for the same reason. The difference must reside in what's unique to each of them. Apples for the first one and cookies for the second one. When we are trying to figure out how to describe a document, we need to look at the document itself, but also at the entire collection that it belongs to so that we could figure out what sets this document apart from the others. So when we want to figure out which features will be relevant, for example, how many times does a word occur, we need to figure out features or words that are very frequent in a document, for example, apples in the one we saw before, but also infrequent in other documents. The other document did not have the word apples. So we need to figure out how frequent something is within our document and also in the rest of the collection. And the method to do this is called a term frequency inverse document frequency matrix, or TF-IDF. So why can't we just count words? Maybe we can just count how many uh, words we have in every document and that'll be the end of that. Because it'll give us a, um, a strange result for what the document is about. And the short answer is that there's words that are very frequent, but they don't communicate much. If I give you this document, sushi is the best type of snack in the world. It's the best. What is this document about? Your human brain probably wants to say that it's about sushi. But what the computer can see is that there's a few words that are very frequent, such as the, which happens three times. For example, the word best, which is which happens two times. So if we count it by just frequency, this document would be about the word the and about the word best. This document would not be about sushi. So we can't just count words and hope that the most frequent word is going to give us the actual answer we need. And this is a feature of language. Very common words like the and if um, are not very full of content, of meaning. The more infrequent words, like sushi, for example, have a, a lot of meaning encapsulated in them. So to overcome the problems of just counting words, we are going to use an object called the TF-IDF matrix, which has two sides and two intuitions behind each side. The TF means term frequency. For each document, we're going to try to count the words and see which words are very frequent within that document. So for example, if a given document contains the word sushi a lot, that document is probably about sushi. The other side of this matrix is the inverse document frequency, or IDF. We're going to count how often we see the words in the other documents. Or more accurately, we're going to have all of the documents and we're going to try to figure out if the word occurs 
in this document, this document, and in general, how many documents have that word? If we have the word the, and we see the word the in every single document, it means that it's not going to be a good way to tell the documents apart because they all have it. On the other hand, if we have older documents and the word sushi appears only in a few of them, then we know that this word is going to be a good feature for distinguishing a set of documents from the rest of the documents. So let's turn these intuitions into a language that the computer can understand, into numbers. The first part is the term frequency matrix. We have here four plays from Shakespeare, two comedies, As You Like It and Twelfth Night, and two tragedies, Julius Caesar and Henry V. We also have four words or features. We have uh, how many times we have the word battle in each of them, how many times we have the word good, how many times we see the word fool, and how many times we see the word wit in each of the plays. As you can see, the word battle has a, a distribution where you see more of it in the tragedies. You have many more in Julius Caesar and Henry V compared to in the comedies. On the other hand, words like fool and wit, which were associated to comedy in the 16th century, are more common in the comedies. They occur 36 times, 58 times, as compared to just a few in the tragedies. And then there's the word good, which is fairly stable across all the documents. All, in all the documents, it, it is a very frequent word, and it doesn't really help us to distinguish comedies from tragedies. So in order to compensate for words that are very common throughout all of our documents, we have the second matrix, the inverse document frequency. We are going to count, we're going to take all the documents in our collection, and then we're going to count how many documents have the word we're looking for. For example, in 37 place of Shakespeare, the word Romeo only appears in the one in Romeo and Juliet, so it appears in one document. On the other hand, a word like good appears in all of the 37 place, so its document frequency is 37. We need to perform a further calculation. We're going to take the total of documents in the collection, 37, and divide it by the documents that contain those words. In the case of Romeo, it will be 37 divided by 1 equals 37. 37. And then we're going to take the base 10 logarithm of that number. Base 10 logarithm is 1.57, which is what we see here. So for all these numbers, this is the total of documents in the collection, 37, divided by the number of documents that have the word, and this is what appears here. We are going to perform the same calculation for the TF side. And let's explain a few things. First, why do we have the logarithm? This is to compensate for the fact that some words are very frequent and some words are very infrequent. Not all words are the same. There's words that appear in practically every sentence that we use. Words like the, or is, or and. They are extremely common. On the other hand, there's words that are incredibly infrequent, like chlorophyll, for example. So the distribution of frequency in words is exponential, where we have many words that are relatively infrequent and a few words that are very frequent. We're going to compensate for it by uh, turning this, by applying a logarithm and turning this into a more linear uh, function. That's why we have the logarithm there, to compensate for the fact that some words are incredibly frequent and some words are mostly infrequent. Then we have the base 10 logarithm of, the, of how uh, many times we see the word in the document, plus one. The one is there to help us with the math. If we do, for example, in Twelfth Night, the word battle appears zero times. 
If we try to do the base 10 logarithm of zero, we're gonna get a math error because that number is undefined. We need to add the one so that we can compute the number correctly. Logarithm base 10 of one is equal to zero. So we're gonna add one to each of our values to make sure that our math uh, performs correctly. In general, this calculation is called smoothing. We're gonna talk more about it on week four. So the number that we want for the term frequency is the base 10 logarithm of the frequency of each word within the document. So how many times we see the word battle in Julius Caesar, for example, plus one. And those are the numbers that we have here. Then we multiply them. For example, the TF IDF number for wit and as you like it is going to be the frequency in the document 1.32 multiplied by the frequency in the entire collection of documents 0 0.037. As we can see here, that number is 0 0.049. So this is a measurement of frequency that takes into account the local frequency in each of the documents and the global frequency of a word in the entire collection. We can see that this has very interesting properties. We still have the clusters we detected before. For example, the word battle is most frequent in the tragedies, in Julius Caesar and in Henry V. And the words fool and wit are most frequent in the comedies, in As You Like It and Twelfth Night. But the word good is now irrelevant. It is now zero throughout all of our place. It's because it was never relevant to begin with. It uh, you could see it in every play and therefore it, was, it uniquely described no play. We're going to use uh, TFIDF matrices to cluster objects. And one of your exercises this week is going to be to take Shakespeare place and to uh, take a number of features, approximately 200, and cluster place together. As you can see, it works. For example, um, in the upper section, we have uh, Julius Caesar and Henry V, and we can see that they are very close together. This is because the TF-IDF numbers are relatively similar. This also clusters them with other tragedies, such as Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet, for example. On the bottom of the clusters, we have the comedies, Twelfth Night and As You Like It. Not only are these two close together, but they're also close together to other comedies, such as All's Well That Ends Well and Much Ado About Nothing. So in summary, when we are trying to figure out what a document is about, we need to find words that clearly distinguish it from other documents. And these words are going to have two properties. They're going to be frequent within the document, but they're going to be infrequent throughout the collection. So that whenever a document appears that does have our word, it's going to be very precious and unique and it's going to be well described by that word. We can identify these special words using a TF-IDF matrix. And we can also use this matrix to cluster things together. 